everyone. Today we are going to do something a little bit different. This is one of my favorite things to do with yoga is use the wall as my prop. So we're going to be doing some yoga poses at the wall. We're first going to start by warming up and getting our body just a little bit more fluid and feeling good. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get right into it. One thing that you might want to have is a blanket or a pillow. I have my blanket to use in case I want to prop my pelvis up or um, just for a little bit more support for my knees or ankles or wrists or anything like that. So uh, you might want to grab one of those before you start this video and I think we'll go ahead and get going to it. So let's go ahead and start in child's pose just to loosen us up a bit. If you want, you can put your blanket right underneath your knees or your ankles. Uh, you could also rest your head onto a blanket as well. We'll come on to our child's pose, bring the knees apart and big toes together and resting your arms off in front of you. And just take a few moments to settle in. Let your low back start to elongate and relax. Let the shoulders relax as well too as they go away from the ears and down the back. Take a nice slow inhale through the nose and exhale out the mouth. Slowly inhale through the nose Exhale. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. And start to straighten out your arms out in front of you. Pull yourself up to your hands and your knees. And let's just do a few rounds of cat-cow. On your inhale, open up through the front of the body. And then on your exhale, start to round the body. Open up the back of the body. Two more times. You might feel like this is a huge stretch to start off, so take it nice and slow, whatever feels good. Coming back into a nice neutral spine, we'll take our hands forward an inch or two of the shoulders. Tuck the toes, send the hips up. And just breathe into your downward dog. You might move around or you might find stillness. Press the floor away from you with your hands. Think about sending your chest towards your thighs. Letting your head relax and maybe shake it out. One more breath in. One more breath out. Start to walk the feet all the way up to your hands for a forward fold, bringing your feet about hip width apart, and take a rag doll. Soften through the knees, maybe even sway from side to side. One or two more breaths here. And then as you're ready, releasing the hands. Bend your knees a little bit more, take the hands underneath the feet from the front, and wiggle the toes onto the pads of the hands, so you're feeling a nice little massage for your hands. Let the head drop, you might start to straighten out the legs more, or just keep them where they're at. One or two more breaths here. And then releasing the hands. On your inhale, lift up halfway into a flat spine. Make sure the weight is forward into the pads of the feet. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up over your head with the arms. Exhale, come back down, forward fold. On your inhale, lifting up halfway into a flat spine and forward folding on the exhale. On the inhale, rise, arms all the way up over your head and forward fold on the exhale. On the inhale, lift up halfway, and this time step back into a plank pose. Once you come into your plank pose, really try to firm up through the knuckles, pressing firmly into the hands. On your inhale, shift the weight forward onto your toes, your choice depending on what you've already done for your day today. You can drop your knees down, maybe take a chaturanga to the floor, or go into your up dog. You can go into low cobra from your, all the way down onto your belly. Coming back down, tuck the toes, Maybe use your knees to come into plank and go into downward dog. Take one breath in, one breath out, 
And then on your inhale, taking your right leg up to the sky, stack the hips, bend the knee, three-legged dog. Relaxing the left heel down towards the ground, opening up through the hip, and then straighten it out and set the foot back down. Inhale, bring your left leg up. Exhale, stack the hips, bend the knee. Relax the right heel down towards the floor. Same thing, other side. Feeling that nice openness and through the right leg. And then straighten out the leg, center out the hips, set the foot back down. Let's walk the feet up to our hands for a forward fold. This time in your forward fold, interlace the fingers from behind and reach your arms up and over your head. Taking two to three long inhales and exhales. If your arms don't go away from your back, you can totally have your hands interlaced at your low back. And if that still doesn't feel good, feel free to touch the floor instead. Take one more breath in, one more breath out, and then releasing the hands again. Inhale, lifting up halfway into a flat spine, and forward fold on the exhale. Inhale, let's rise, arms all the way up over your head, and exhale, draw the hands to your heart center. Taking your feet about three feet apart, turn your knees and your toes out just a little bit, bend your knees so your knees are tracking in line with the second toes, and then take the elbows onto the thighs. So coming into this position, we're wanting to think about the knees going out, so that the knees stay tracking in line with the second toes. And then a nice inner thigh stretch, opening up, inhale. Exhale, trying to create a flat back as you're in this one. One more inhale, one more exhale. Taking the left hand on the inside edge of the left knee, drop the left shoulder, look over the right shoulder. Take two breaths here. And this is a twist in through the body, so making sure that you have a long spine. One more breath in, one full breath out. And then coming back through center, let's go to the other side. Taking the right hand on the inside of the right knee, dropping the right shoulder, looking over your left shoulder. Taking a couple breaths here. Again, long spine. Thinking about the tailbone, reaching back as you're reaching out through your head. On your next inhale, coming back through center. Take one more breath in. On your exhale, take a wide stance forward fold. So turn your toes forward, maybe even slightly in. You might walk your feet out a bit more so that you can go deeper. And then come on down into this forward fold. Feel free to have your hands onto the mat. You can bend your elbows. You can pull yourself down, whatever feels good. Take a few more breaths here. Inhaling and exhaling. And then from here, coming back into your wide stance forward fold with your hands on the mat. Quarter turn so that your left foot is forward and your right foot is back, you're in a lunge. From your lunge, you can stay off of the knee or you can drop it down, maybe even put your blanket or pillow underneath your knee if you would like. Taking a couple breaths here, inhale. Exhale. And pressing the left hip back, right hip forward, inhale. Exhale. From here, we'll all drop our knee onto the floor and untuck the toes, coming into a low lunge with the hands onto the knee. Still thinking about pressing the left hip back and the right hip forward. Inhaling. Exhaling. If you want a deeper stretch, you might bend your right knee, grab the outside edge of the foot with the right hand. Maybe you want to grab inside, woo, inside the edge of the right foot with the left hand. Go slow. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, one more inhale, and a full on exhale. From there, releasing the foot, place the hands onto the floor. We're going to straighten out through the left leg. We're not sitting back all the way down onto our heel or onto the floor. Just wiggle your left heel forward. And create a nice long line with the left leg as much as you can. If the knee is bent, no worries. And then breathe here. Nice long spine. Inhale. Exhale. Two more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath. 
inhale. Exhale. Coming back into a bent left knee. So take the foot onto the floor. You might need to wiggle it on back a little bit. Tuck the toes and send the hips up for downward dog. Inhaling here. Exhaling. Take your left foot, step it in between the hands, quarter turn facing so that you can um, come back into your wide stance forward fold. We're gonna go back into the other side. So we're just switching it out to the other side. Right foot is forward now, left foot is back. You can stay up or you can drop the knee down. Whichever one you're coming into, just making sure that you're pushing your right hip back and your left hip forward. Take a couple more breaths here, inhale. Exhale. One more breath in. Exhale. Dropping the back knee down. Okay? And then coming up onto the thigh with the hands. So coming into your lunge. Pressing the left hip forward, right hip back. Inhaling. Exhaling. And again, if you would like to, you might bend your left knee so that you can grab the outside edge of the left foot with the left hand. Maybe you want to grab the inside edge of the left foot with the right hand. So holding on to the foot, nice tall body, pressing the left hip forward, inhaling, exhaling. One more breath in. On your exhale, releasing the foot, and then straightening out for the right leg. And again, you might need to wiggle it forward. Okay, nice long spine. So instead of rounding your back, think about setting your chest forward. Flexing the right foot. Inhale. Exhale. Two more breaths. Keep thinking about long spine. All right, let's come back into our lunge. Maybe waddle the foot back. Plant the hands, lift the back knee, come into downward dog. So from downward dog, take one or two breaths. If you wanna take a flow, if you wanna take a little vinyasa, this might be a good opportunity to do so. Just to loosen some stuff up in there, open up through the chest. Once you have made your way back into downward dog, you can walk your feet all the way up to your hands, coming into a forward fold. Once you're in a forward fold, inhale, lifting up halfway, and then folding on the exhale. On the inhale, let's come all the way up, and hands come back to your center on the exhale. All right, so go ahead and release your arms. You're going to find a wall. We're going into some wall uh, stretches and some postures that you can do um, that you might be doing on your mat without any props at all, but these are some good ones to do to just open you up in a different way and just get a different perspective on some postures. So you're going to go ahead and find your wall. We're going into downward dog on the wall first. This is one of my favorite ones. You're going to have your hands at hip height. Okay, walk up to the wall. Place the hands onto the wall at hip height, fingertips pointed up, and start to walk your feet back. So this is downward dog on the wall. Our feet are about hip width apart. Our knees might be bent. We're thinking about our chest coming down towards the ground, so getting a nice stretch in through the armpits and the chest. Hands are pressing into the wall so that your arms are long. Your knees might be bent so you can have a long spine, or you might start to straighten out through the legs. You just don't wanna lock out the legs in this one, okay? So soften the knees a little bit. If you feel like you're hunching your back up, bend your knees a lot. And then thinking about sticking your chest out as your tailbone is going up. So you're really trying to find this nice long spine. Then start to straighten out through the legs a little bit more. You might, if you're feeling any kind of tension in through your low back, draw your front ribs in. Okay, that's just a good measure to think about anyway. And then breathe here. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. One more exhale. When you're ready, slowly walk your feet back up, come back up, and then just shake out the hands. You might feel like your hands get a little sweaty from that, <laughs> or at least mine do. Uh, really 
concentrate on making sure you're being mindful about your shoulders in these ones too, okay? Um, especially since we're diving our chest so low and the weight and gravity is really pulling us down, just be mindful that uh, you're not hurting anything in there. So just be cautious. Let's do that one more time, this time adding on a little bit to it. So hands hip height at the wall. Walk your feet out. You're making like an L shape with your body, okay? So ankles underneath the hips, feet hip width apart. Exhale, sinking down nice and low. Let your head relax. Maybe have your knees bent so you can think about your tailbone going up. Maybe the front ribs are coming in. Inhaling. Exhale. Two more breaths here. Breathe into your shoulders. Breathe into your armpits, the upper arms. And then when you're ready, slowly, oh, JK, we're gonna stay here. Okay, so from here, you might practice some cat-cat. So rounding your body as you exhale, and then on your inhale, start to think about opening up through the chest and sending the chest down. Exhaling, rounding out. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale. All right, from here. Now let's go ahead and walk our feet all the way up. And then shake out, roll up the hands, do whatever you gotta do. Just kind of loosen some stuff up in there. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is even more in through the shoulder. So just be mindful as you go. You're gonna stand with your left shoulder facing the wall. Okay, my feet are about hip height. I'm gonna take my hand about shoulder height onto the wall with my elbow soft and bent. So you're not like this close to the wall and you're not like barely touching the wall. You're at a comfortable bend in through the elbow. It's very important that my hand is shoulder height, okay? So just maybe even have a friend or family member watch you as you're doing this one to make sure that you're not doing anything funky in through the shoulder, okay? So if anything, take it more mildly, <laughs> if that makes sense. So from here, my hips and my shoulders are in line. My feet are firm into the floor. My hand is pressing into the wall, but just enough so that my elbow is bent. I'm gonna think about keeping my shoulder just like this, okay? So very um, symmetrical with the other one, keeping the shoulder head pointed in the same direction as if I were just standing, okay? That's a lot of detail. Then from here, think about your hips twisting to the right. So my right hip is going back, my left hip is coming forward, my shoulder stays the same. Already, you might already feel a stretch down your neck and through your arm. Then from here, you might start to straighten out through the arm a little bit. Okay, it's just a tiny little bit. And then you're gonna feel it all the way down into your fingers there. You might turn your torso just a little bit more to feel a deeper stretch. So it's not very much movement, but you feel it a lot. There's a lot of feelings in this one. Take a couple more breaths, and pressing your knuckles into the wall. And then slowly come back with the chest, come back with the hips, and then relax your arm. Whew. Okay, let that arm relax, let it rest, and shake out the hand, and then we're gonna go to the other side. Okay, so pretend like I'm going over there, I'm just gonna stay over here. We're gonna take our right hand onto the wall, okay? Feet hip width apart. Thinking about your hips, going a little bit to the left, okay? Maybe the arm straightens out, maybe the right arm straightens out a little, and then the chest is also going to the left. You might even look over your shoulder. Taking a couple breaths here. And slowly come back, shoulders, hips, and relax the arm. Okay, shake it out. So the whole time that you're doing this one, yeah, you don't even really need the wall. I can do this without the wall, just having my hand shoulder height and thinking about my hips turning, my arms starting to straighten a little bit, and already I can feel it down into my hand, and then maybe my chest moves a little bit, okay? Important factors in this one is that you don't want to arch. Okay, you want to protect your back, right? So bring the front ribs in, tuck the pelvis underneath of you. So if you do need to do it again on both sides, perfectly fine to do so. Just really be mindful that this isn't a huge, like we're not 
dramatically moving our body over to the side, that we're taking our time, just very subtle movements here. Okay, so you can pause the video if you want to do it again. Uh, otherwise, go ahead and shake it out. Roll out the shoulders a little bit. Make sure that your head and your neck are relaxed. Okay, and then going on into our next one. So, this is where having those nice open shoulders with some of the shoulder opening that we've done so far is gonna come in handy and some of the hip opening that we've done as well too. So go ahead and make sure that the wall is right behind you because we're gonna be doing our standing split in a three-legged dog with the wall. So placing the hands onto the floor and bring your feet into, or our whole body into downward dog, okay? So if you wanted to do this without a wall, you totally can, just follow along um, coming into this without the wall as your prop. From here, we're gonna start walking our body towards the wall until we have about maybe six inches or so away from the wall. Take your left foot and place it onto the wall, okay? So my toes are pointed down, my left toes are pointed down, my left hip relaxes down. Feeling a huge stretch in through the right calf all the way up into my right glute and breathe here. And this is a nice way for my foot to go somewhere so that I can really focus on having my left hip in line with my right hip. Take one more breath in, one more breath out, and then slowly releasing the foot back down. Okay, try the other side. So now my right foot goes onto the wall, the pad of my foot. I'm gonna relax the right hip down, let the left heel relax as well too. Breathe in and breathe out. You're gonna also feel some heat building up in through your shoulders. Lots of work here. <laughs> One more breath in. And then slowly release the foot back down. Come into child's pose. In your child's pose, rest your forehead onto the floor while your arms dangle to your sides. Okay, this is just a nice way for our shoulders to have a break. You can even turn your head to the side and breathe in and out one or two breaths and then turn your head to the other side just so that you can get your neck to relax too. Okay, so then from here, we're gonna go back into our downward dog and work on our standing splits at the wall. So <clears throat> what we just did was neutral and for the hips and our three-legged dog now we're gonna open up through our hips. So for me, personally, I like to bring my heels all the way up to the wall. Uh, if you're feeling super tight, stay in this position with your feet about six inches or so away from the wall. It will help you as you walk your hands in towards your standing foot, okay? So I might walk in a little bit further. And then from here, I'm gonna take my left foot up to the wall. I'm gonna open up the hip. So my left hip is coming on top of the right hip, okay? Then from here, you might point your left toes or you might keep them flexed, it depends. For me, pointing helps me to walk my foot up. Then from here, I'm gonna start walking my hands in towards my standing foot, okay? I might walk my hands all the way in or I might stay where I'm at. And this is what feels comfortable for me today, so I'm gonna stay here and then breathe. So using the wall as a way to get my leg up without having to use so much strength and through my left glute and leg, this puts a lot of work into my hands. <laughs> it puts a lot of work into my standing foot and leg. Then to come out of this, I'm gonna walk my hands back forward again and then put my foot back down onto the floor. Going to the other side, my right foot comes up. Okay, I'm gonna stack the right hip on top of the left, maybe point the right toes and then start walking the hands in towards the standing foot. Okay, and this is what feels comfortable for me, so this is where I stay. If my left um, knee needs to bend, go ahead and let it bend. Okay, keep breathing. And when you're ready, you'll start to come back down again, into downward dog and into child's pose. Okay, you take a couple breaths, Maybe bring your arms back down to your sides again. Awesome. 
All right, from there, making your way back up onto hands and knees. Go ahead and sit in a comfortable position for a moment, maybe into your heels or sitting down onto the floor or onto a blanket if you would like some more support. Okay, just begin to roll the shoulders back a couple of times. So there's a lot going on in through the shoulders, lots of upper body with those. You're gonna roll it forward a few times. You can even place your hands onto your shoulders and do some circles with your elbows. And then going forward. Okay, and then from there, just relaxing. You might roll out your wrist, just kind of get things to loosen up a bit. Okay, so those were just a few of the things that we can do at the wall. We're gonna do one more um, wall yoga posture that we can come into. Uh, to finish off our practice today, okay? So, here we go. We're gonna come up to the wall. And I'm gonna take my left hip all the way up to the wall. Once it's all the way up to the wall, okay, my left hip is up to the wall, I'm gonna bring the leg straight up and lay down so that my thumb is on the wall, okay? You might need to do this a couple times. If the bum isn't all the way up to the wall, that's okay, just get it as close as you can with your legs up to the sky. You might take your blanket, okay? And you can put it underneath of you. Ah, and that feels really nice too. Okay, this just gives you a little bit more cushion uh, underneath the hips, underneath the low back. And then from here, you decide you can have your legs straight up. If my wall was long enough, I could straddle, but it's not quite long enough as you can see. Um, and so straddling, what I could do is take my feet onto the wall. I can bring my feet together and my knees out. And maybe even let my feet come in towards the pelvis a bit more. You can have your arms whatever feels comfortable. Sometimes it's nice to have the hands on the inside edges of the knees. And not like you're pushing, pushing, but just a little bit of um, resistance into your knees so that you can... Uh, feel a deeper stretch in through the inner thighs. It's not as relaxing because your hands have to do a little bit of work. So you might have your hands just resting onto your belly, onto your chest, wherever you'd like. And just start to close your eyes. You can change it up at any point in time. So you might have your feet onto the floor with your knees bent, or you might stay with your legs up to the sky. Let's just stay here for a few moments, letting the shoulders relax. is one that I like to stay in for several minutes, maybe three to five minutes. One more inhale and an exhale. And wherever your legs are, start to draw them back up towards the wall, okay? And then take the feet onto the wall and just notice how that feels. Letting the inner thighs relax, letting the hips relax, the low back relax. And then just rolling onto the right side of your body into like a little ball position here, okay? Letting the legs get blood back into the toes. And slowly 
Start to make your way back up to sit. And once you come up to sit, you might take your blanket and place it back up against the wall again. Okay, and then sit into your blanket. And just notice how it feels to sit cross-legged with the wall supporting you. And this is one of my favorite things to do as well too, is to just let my back be supported. Instead of me having to hold myself up, the wall is helping to keep me up. So your choice, you can sit cross-legged, you can have your legs straight out in front of you, or you could also bring your feet together and knees out. Okay, and then from here, you can decide to stretch, okay? So you can decide to just rest with your back up to the wall. You might forward fold. If you're sitting with your feet together and knees out, you might place your hands onto your knees and gently press down, and then just close your eyes. So you decide how you want to finish off this last stretch. Three more big inhales and exhales. Start to draw the knees in towards your body wherever you are. So bringing the knees in, maybe even giving them a little hug. Letting your back ground, so let the head drop down. And then lifting your head back up, sitting cross-legged or butterfly or whatever feels good for you. Okay, place my hands onto the knees. Take one more breath in. One more breath out. And thank you so much for practicing with me today. Maybe trying something new if you've never used the wall before. I hope the wall is one of your new favorite props to use now. Until next time, I'll see you next time. Namaste.